Hey guys, it's Clarence again from Asian Tech Guy. As you can see right here, I finally put the bullet on a Zotac RTX 3070 Twin H OC. This is a OHR version of the cut, so it's not that good for mining. This is fine for me because I'm not a crypto miner. It ain't matter too much. I got this for $1,300. It's slightly below the market rate by about 50 bucks. It's still a bit too high, but after a long drought, I really can't wait. Currently using an RTX 2070 Super. It's still plenty good for my needs. I'm just feeling the itch to upgrade. So that's why I got this. The card I'm using right now is an RTX 2070 Super M. It's on the Turin architecture. I got it for only 500 bucks. If you see my previous part time video, you should be able to see it. In this new card, it's on the Ampere architecture. They're both from Zotac. And all those slot cards with dual fans. Of course, the triple fan variety, likely you can have the same temp at lower noise levels, which is preferable, but Zotac, being Zotac, for certain level of graphics card, they only stick to dual fans. But the good thing is that they have five year warranty. So that's something to behold, especially if you mine on these cards, you can get it spoiled within five years and get it RMA. Now let's talk about the differences between the 2070 Super and the 3070 from Zotac, at least the models I have. The 3070 is slightly shorter, but thicker in the other dimension in terms of the slot length. They seem to be using 100mm fans instead of 90mm fans in 3070 Super. On paper, it looks like both these cards are even matched up for each other. In terms of power consumption, the 2070 Super, uh, the TDP is at 215 watts, 6 pin and 8 pin PCIe supplemental power. As for the 3070, it's a 220 watt TDP and uses two 8 pins PCIe supplemental power. So that's virtually identical. So both of these guys features 8 gigs of RAM, GDDR6 speeds. For the 2070 Super, it seems to age out a late in clock speeds with a 1605 megahertz base and 1800 megahertz boost clock. So that would stay ahead of the RTX 3070 1500 megahertz base and a 1755 megahertz boost clocks. But if you look at the quarter clause, 5888 could have cost. The RTX 3070 has more than double of that of 27 Super, which has 2560 could have cost. Well, some of that may come down to the way where NVIDIA, how they restructure their could have cost to include dedicated FP32 cores and additional cores that can tackle either IN32 or FP32. By the way, guys, these are component number formats, PC used to do calculations. By the way, FP32 cores tend to carry more of the load in gaming and graphics. So this may prove to you know, give the RTX 3070 a lead in gaming performance. For the RTX 3070, they also feature newer ray tracing and tensor cores. They should make features like ray tracing and DLSS better on this card. The Zotac 3070 Twin H OC LHR, they have this like funky looking edge rather than the rectangular design that I used to look at. I think it's a fresh, you know, new look, which I'm inclined to like. Another thing is that there's no RGB on this card. They use just plain old white LED. That's fine by me because I'm using this NR200 with a vented side panel. So it doesn't matter. I can't even look at the card. Yeah, by the way guys, I'm too lazy to hook up RGB because RGB usually on top of that PWM haters, you still have to deal with the three pin five volt haters, which is a pain to be honest. I'm too lazy to deal with that. Without a doubt, of course, we're going to explore if it's worth it to upgrade from the 2070 Super to the 3070 and I'm currently on an ultra wide 3440 by 1440p on a 144 small monitor on that Xiaomi right here. This is something that we rarely see, ultra wide gaming. So it's something that I want to explore. 3440 by 1440p honestly is somewhere in between 2K and 4K. So it's more on GPU dependent, so it will benefit greatly by upgrading the graphics card for sure. The test system for this test is going to be run on the Ryzen 5 3600X. For RAM, we are using the Corsair Vendors LPX 3600MHz at CL18. For the motherboard, we have the Gigabyte B50i Aorus Pro AX motherboard. And all of these guys is stored in a NR200 white mesh edition with the instructions in place. We're going to go ahead to unbox this 3070 and get this guy going and put it through its paces. So we're gonna do this a bit different. We already see benchmarks at 3440 by 1440p, which is what I'm gonna do today. 
and it's what I personally use in my personal PC. So this is somewhere in the ballpark between 4K and 2K. That is frame rate is generally more dependent on the GPU than CPU. So if there's only one thing you're gonna upgrade, it's definitely gonna be that GPU. If you guys have made it to this part of the video, I would greatly appreciate it. If you could like and subscribe, it would greatly help the YouTube algorithm and push this channel further. I don't it ain't much, but I promise to make this good and it's something I really want to do. So yeah, just do it. So we're just gonna be using one Centennial benchmark. We're gonna use the most intensive of all the engine benchmarks. We'll be using Super Position at medium presets. So on the 2070 Super, we're getting an average FPS of 61.73 and we've seen an improvement to the 3070. We yielded an average FPS of 96.12, so this is about 50% increase. Gaming benchmarks is where the money set because that's more reflective of like real world performance. So all of this test, I've actually you know been repeating the same levels over and over at least three times. Or if the situation permits, I'll use the in-game benchmarks. Fortnite is still a very popular title in this day and age. For this, we're using high presets, the epic view distance of course, and we're gonna be utilizing DLSS at a balanced setting, like performance bump to 165. So this is about 16% increase. It's title. Yeah, this is a game I played in my secondary school days, pretty much probably around 15 to 18 years ago. Diablo 2 resurrected. Well, it didn't get a very nice fan base when it's released this time because of the server issues. But all that has been resolved at least to a certain extent. When I tried to play and join a game or create a game, I didn't really, you know, have to queue for a long time. But anyway, let's go right ahead. For this title, we're going to use the very high presets. And we're just going to do recognition runs at the story field because that's as far as I've been to in Nightmare. Uh, for some reason, I couldn't find the time and stamina to go through the game like I did before. For average FPS, we've seen an improvement from 65 to 92. And for the 1% lows, we've seen an improvement from 46 to 66 FPS. So for this title, it's really highly unoptimized, if we will. And we've seen a whooping 42% improvement, which is insane. I can take a break here. Sheriff Tomb Raider has an inbuilt benchmark, which is really perfect for benchmarking. And it's still a very demanding title. We're going to be using the highest presets for this. Yeah, we've seen a performance bump. We're averaging at 73 FPS on the 3070 Super. And we actually got a 98 FPS average for the 3070. So that's about 34% increase in performance. The last thing we're doing here, it's Cyberpunk 2077. This game has, you know, gained uh, critical acclaim since the start. There's a lot of hype to it. But Everything died down after a while to us, at least to me. It's definitely great for benchmarking games because this half a difficult title to run. We're gonna be using high end presets with the DLSS in balance mode for this. For the average FPS, we've seen an improvement from 65 to 92. For the 1% lows, we've seen an improvement from 46 to 66 FPS. In total, that's about 42% improvement in this really hard to run title. I know, which is very combinable for 3070. It's kind of a mid upper range cut. Actually, I really wanted 3080, but really very elusive. Nowhere to be found. So I set up for this, but I'm really glad that the improvement in these titles is pretty decent. To summarize, depending on the title, uh, from what I tested, there's about 16 to 42% improvement in frame rates. I'm talking about average and 1% lows here. Uh, for me, it's totally worth it, especially that the 27 Super now can be sold for about 1.2K and I got the 3070 for 1.3k so basically I only paid 100 bucks for the Delta it's insane in today's market and well, on a side note I got that 20, 2070 Super for 500 bucks in December of last year so it's really a great deal for me anyhow we've come to the end of the video I really hope you enjoy it it's a bit late for me to join the RTX 30 series game but better late than never and till the next time this is Terrence from Asian Tech Guy checking out